The world, after being scarred by the illness of a century, prepares to enter a new phase with a recovering economy where aspects of our lives are more digital than ever. In these times, there are few certainties, but one thing that's as close as anything to certain is that more and more organizations will turn to business analytics and data science to make sense of the growing sea of data in their worlds. And that's where I come in to help you break into this wonderful world. So I've done a number of videos before on things like learning data science, getting a data science job, whether or not it's possible to get a job without a degree or not, all this fun but slightly disconnected stuff. What I've not necessarily done is connect all these different dots. So if you're somebody who's starting completely fresh or you're in school right now with the goal of getting into data science eventually, how all this comes together to make you somebody who can break into this field. Well, today I'm going to break down for you how you can launch an exciting journey into data science in five different pieces. Before I do that, just a few usual asks. Number one, if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please take a moment to do so. Then take another second to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And then if you would like to chip in to support my channel, I'll have links in the description of this video to my PayPal address and crypto wallet addresses. Also, please note that I'm not a licensed or professional career advisor or anything of that sort, so please just take this video to give you some hopefully useful food for thought, as well as for entertainment purposes. Alright, the first piece of breaking into data science that we need to talk about is your accreditation. That is, your college degree, your certifications, all that fun stuff. Unfortunately, it's not enough just to have skills and to know your stuff. You need to have somebody else that can certify the fact that you have skills and know your stuff. That's essentially what a degree or a certification is doing. Now I've done a video all about whether or not you can become a data scientist without a college degree. And the simple answer to that is it's not going to necessarily be easy, but it is possible. But the simple reality of the situation is that if you have a PhD, you're probably in the best possible situation. If you just have a master's, you're in the next best position, followed by somebody who has just a bachelor's, followed by somebody who has no degree at all. However, there's absolutely no need to have a PhD or a master's to break into the data science field. And in fact, it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 50% of people who don't have one of those advanced degrees who are in the field. So for deciding what level of education you want to get up to, honestly, make it more of a personal decision. Ask yourself some key questions like, are you interested in doing research? Would getting, say, a master's degree actually help you learn more? And are you genuinely passionate about the thing that you're pursuing for your degree? What you don't want to do is commit yourself to getting some kind of degree, especially if it's a master's or a PhD, when it's in something that you're not genuinely interested in, or worse yet, you can't afford. It's just not worth it. So when I personally got my master's, it was in a circumstance where I was really interested in learning more about statistics, and I felt there was more that that degree could offer me. Ultimately, I think that was the right decision for me, but that doesn't mean that's the exact way that you need to go. But then if you don't have a degree, or you don't want to get a degree at all, don't worry, there are options for you too. Namely, those are Coursera courses and certifications. And I'll have links in the description of this video to relevant things you could do as far as topics like statistics, SQL, R, or Python are concerned. Now the second part of this is that if you're going to break into data science, you've got to know your stuff. And I'm making this very separate and distinct from the piece about accreditation, and there's a couple reasons for that. Number one, because college education and courses and certifications and things like that mark the beginning of your journey of learning and not the ending. And number two, just because you have a fancy degree which says that you know your stuff doesn't necessarily mean that you do. There's going to be employers out there that have expectations for you to have particular skills. And then oftentimes during the interview process, they're going to put the skills that you claim to have to the test. 
So the natural follow-up question is, what are the necessary skills to have in order to break into data science? With the understanding of there's way too many different things out there, and there's no way that a normal person who's just getting started trying to break into the field can know absolutely everything. Well, I have a video on a study pathway for data science where I break down what skills I recommend learning, in what order, and why I recommend learning things in that order. But I'll try to break that down at a high level for you here. I think of the domain and the business side of things in data science as the why. Then statistics is the what, and programming and computing is the how. And quite frankly, if you don't have the why or the what, the how isn't going to do you much good. It's for that reason I recommend learning statistics first. And you want to learn things like probability, distributions, confidence intervals, hypothesis testing, and linear models, because you need different methods and approaches for attacking various problems. Statistics is also going to help you appropriately interpret results and findings, which is going to help keep you out of trouble. I say it in almost every video, but statistics is what puts the science in data science. Without it, you just have data pseudoscience. After you have a solid understanding of key statistical topics and you've tried some practice problems, next you want to learn SQL and you want to understand multi-relational databases. That way, when you encounter real-world data, you can query it and get it into a format that you can very easily work with. After that, you've got two juggernaut programming languages in the data science world to choose between. Those are R or Python. Pick one and master it. You should then have the bare minimum requirements in order to get a solid data science job. But remember, whether you just got your degree, you just got comfortable with a new programming language for the first time, or even if you just landed your first job, the learning is only beginning. You eventually want to move on and learn the other one of R Python. You also want to learn linear algebra and machine learning, and you want to know some principles behind user experience and human-centered design. Again, whatever you can learn from a college degree, that's going to be the best approach. But there are tons of other resources out there that you want to make use of whether or not you're pursuing a degree. Coursera classes, books, and tutorials on websites like W3Schools or Code Academy are all fantastic resources which will cost you either nothing or a fraction of the cost that formal education is going to bring you. So just give yourself some structure by making a plan. Try to learn a little bit of data science every day or as close to every day as possible. You stick to that plan and you're going to do just fine. Next, you need to practice your skills and put the things that you've been learning to the test. This is yet another one of those cases where there's multiple different things that you can do. And all those things are going to help, but some of them are going to be better than others. I think the best opportunity you can possibly get is in an internship where you're practicing data science to solve real business problems, and it's in a domain that's at least mildly interesting to you. You'll kill two birds with one stone, because it's a type of job experience that typically doesn't strictly require previous job experience, so it's just going to make it easier for you to get your first real job, and you're going to learn a ton in the process. But suppose that's not an option. Well, if you're in school and you're performing academic projects, that's probably the next best option. And I get it. Everybody hates group projects. I used to be one of those people myself. But I must say, when I reflect back on my experiences in school, the instances where I learned the most were the ones where I was writing code to solve real problems inside of a project. These always gave me a ton to talk about in my early interviews, and they're the easiest things that you can do early on in order to build out a portfolio. More on that in the next step. But then the last best thing that you can do, which is still great, is Kaggle challenges. These will give you tons of experience looking at other people's code, which is a phenomenal thing to do in its own right, but also creating your own code to solve different types of problems. 
And it just shows amazing initiative because I guarantee you there's tons and tons of people out there who want to break into data science, but they want to take shortcuts about it. They don't lay the proper foundation and they're not going to be the type of people who go out of their way to do projects on Kaggle. That's a terrific segue into the fourth step of this, which is building out a portfolio. This is probably the quickest and easiest step on this whole list, albeit something that not everybody, yours truly included, has always put as much time and attention to as it deserves. You want to put everything that you've worked on into a good version controlled system like GitHub that other people can access. Now a good portfolio is going to tell stories. With everything in there, you have the opportunity to tell the background and the context of problems, what type of solution you came up with, the code and the implementation of that solution, and then if possible, the outcome and the impact of what you did. This is so powerful, and you're killing so many birds with one stone. On one hand, you're just building a foundation and something that you can share easily with each and every prospective employer. You have the opportunity to demonstrate to them that you're focused on the domain and the business problem and the context at hand, and that you're not just a code monkey. But you're also demonstrating that you're proficient at writing code too, because rather than just saying that you know how to write code, you have something tangible that you can point to and tell a story with. And that of course brings us to step number five, which is, you guessed it, landing a job. This is definitely where I begin rather than, say, trying to start your own data-driven business when you're fresh out of school. Trust me, you'll learn tons in your first few years in industry that you want to get under your belt before you start trying to engage in entrepreneurial pursuits. But okay, at this point, you have some kind of accreditation, you've got some skills that are valuable in the marketplace with some practice under your belt, and you have a portfolio. Honestly, this last part shouldn't be all that hard. I always recommend, rather than applying to hundreds of jobs, apply to fewer jobs. Put a lot of effort into each and every single application, write good solid cover letters tailed to each company, explaining how you can uniquely provide value to that company's problems, and do things like reach out directly to the hiring manager for that position. Be honest about the things you do and do not know, and just focus on how you can help that company and deliver value to them, rather than on things like how much they're going to pay you, and just tell stories to them. This is where things like portfolios are really going to come in handy, because if you can describe a previous problem you've worked on with appropriate context, describe the actual problem, the solution you came up with, point to where they can find the code and the implementation of it, and then also describe what maybe the outcome or the impact was, I guarantee you, you're going to do better than 90% of the people out there competing for the same job. If you can do all of these things, then you're off to the races. Of course, after you get that job, the real fun only begins. Data science is a journey involving endless learning, some almost guaranteed nice money, some surprises and humility along the way, and one or a thousand late nights up writing code. But something that I just think is really exciting about it is that because it's such a brand new field, many of us don't exactly know where we're eventually going to end up. And I don't know about you guys, but I kind of prefer it that way. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider sharing it, hit the like button down below if you haven't already, and leave me a comment down below and just let me know how you broke into data science. Then I'll see you all in the not so distant future. Until then, Richard on data.